Hi, this is Javier Dunn. This is Nick Juhasz from Big Brother 15. Hey, this is Kate Flannery from The Office. Hey, Debbie Gibson here, hanging with my friend Bob on The Bob Show. Hi, this is Sam Harris. Hi, I'm Theo Vaughn. You're listening to The Bob Show on Universal Broadcasting Network. What has no arms and legs and floats in the water? The Bob Show. And now, <laughs> here's Bob! Welcome back to the show, everyone. Boy, it is Monday morning... When you're thinking about a stereotypical Monday morning, this is it. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this pretty, is as this is pretty Monday. Stereotypical as it gets, but you know what? It's all getting a lot better right now because I've had a list. I've been doing this show now for four years, and our next guest has been on my list for all four years of people that I really wanted to have on the show, and uh, it's finally happening. Please welcome to the show, Blake Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for we're, me. we're giving four it off. Four years. Four years I've wanted you on my show, yeah, but yeah, only recently. Written, well, I actually, I may have once or twice. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> but Brandon Rogers helped make me legit. So. Oh, gosh. That's, my, that's the homie right there. <laughs> I love Brandon Rogers. Um, He's a great dude. How have you been, Blake? I've been great. I feel like I haven't like seen you in forever. Not that you and I have ever even met. We've never even <laughs> been in the same room together. But uh, since so you were on season six of American Idol, yes, you were robbed as far as I was concerned. Well, nothing against Jordan Sparks. Well, thanks. No, but you, nothing. But you are one of the few Jordan. people that I picked up the phone for. Well, I don't normally you. do that when it comes to these shows. Like one of my favorite shows every year is So You Think You Can Dance. I rarely pick up the phone. But like you were one of. The, uh, but even though I love the shows. But you were one of the rare times that I picked up the phone because I totally thought you should have won. Well, thank you. So Appreciate it. since then, tell everybody what you've been up to. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Um, it's been a long... So it's been, what, 10 years now? I don't even yeah. know how long it's what been. What season are they on American Idol right now? They're going to be on 13. 13. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's okay. crazy. New staff, new management. It's going to be a whole new show. Yeah, no kidding. How do you it's feel about that? I, well, I mean, uh, who knows? You know what I mean? It's like, it's crazy. I, I, well, I wish they would do what the voice is doing, which is they brought back the old judges, you know? Like, it would be cool to see Paul, Simon, and Randy again in those seats, you know? So Exactly. But everyone's kind of moved on. Yeah. You know. I mean, which is... Yeah, so we'll see. We'll but, see. What, so, but what about you? So what have you been up to? You've released a couple albums. I released a couple albums. Uh, Audio Daydream, Heartbreak on Vinyl. And, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, I've just been honing my craft, becoming a better producer, uh, a better writer and uh, I, I moved to California finally and uh, to come out here and actually to find spirituality and get away <laughs> from the past and start anew you know so. you weren't actually living here uh-uh, no uh, I, have you been I, up I in Washington this I lived whole time? in Washington not the whole time I was kind of back and forth um, for a while uh, I actually stayed on a friend's couch out here just to you know like chest it out first before you know i jump in and get my feet wet because well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do yeah <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that uh but you're from because you're from this is a little piece of trivia bothell washington yeah. is when i moved to washington so i was born in california okay and when i was seven years old we moved to washington and bothell was where we moved to you moved to bothell yeah that That's was crazy. actually i went to shelton view elementary school shelton view yes yeah did you know that? I didn't know. That, <laughs> I don't know if that, it's still there, but it's still there. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, that was the ele- that was the first elementary school I went to, and then I, and then from there I went up to Everett, and I was in Everett till I was about fifteen years old. Oh, right on. So and then you yeah. moved back here. Uh, well, then I'm back to California, and then I've now been in LA now for fifteen years, so seventeen years. I don't know how long it's been. I just know it's been too long. So and all of a sudden my life just is feeling like I'm really old. Too long? Where are you going? <laughs> you, you leaving? No, I'm not Absolutely leaving, not. but it ju- I just feel like all of a sudden, as I'm like listing out these years, and I'm like, wait a minute, so seven, and then 15, and then add another 15 years, and suddenly I'm starting to sound like I'm in my 60s, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Like, <laughs> how, are you, how are you like in L.A.? I like it. It took a while to get acclimated, like right. a really long time, because I moved out here because I didn't really know anyone. In Washington, I had, before Idol, I'd made waves. I used to go by B Shorty. That was my stage names, and I did a lot of hip-hop and a lot of electronic music. And there's no pop music really in Washington. Yeah. And, and I've been a pop writer um, forever and I love pop. So, and uh, after being on like the biggest pop show, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to try it out here eventually. But uh, right after the show, I moved back to Washington because I wasn't a really, f- I didn't know anybody really. And getting into that limelight for the first time was really hard and it was really weird for me. Because uh, you, when you imagine it, like, you, you know, you're growing up, you're doing your craft, you don't imagine that kind of success that quick like right and the, yeah. that the facade of instant tv fame you know J- joe Schmo, you know 
all of a sudden his fame just because on TV, and I don't like that. So yeah. it really messed with my head being on American Idol. So I went home to get like you know my head right, and then as soon as I did, I came here. You know, because your season was sort of like sort of like when I, I, I kind of feel like it kind of all peaked right around that time within within that year or two. Yeah, I did. Like all of the success because it was sort of like each year it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it sort of peaked and it's sort of like, it, you know, and, and it's and as we know, it's been on the down the down slope the last couple seasons. Mm-hmm. Just when I'm just speaking not on quality, I'm speaking just on, you know, based on America watching America losing right. interest. The sa- the market is saturated now with talent competition. Yeah, there's tons and there's of so yeah, there's yeah. so many shows that are exactly based off of American Idol yeah, now. Right. You know, so but, so many shows, it's crazy. But I can imagine, especially for you, and at that time, like you said, it's it, you're just sort of like anybody because you were you were hesitant about auditioning, weren't you? Yeah, you were, I mean, I had never seen the show. My friend actually called me hours before, like ten hours before, actually, and uh, I was I happened to be downtown, and he's like. Hey, mate, you know, he's Aussie, and, and, and <laughs> I, I don't do the best Aussie. That was pretty good, said, though. Yeah. I might uh, go down and audition for American Idol, and, uh, you know. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I thank him to this day, you know. You know, so it's how, just fate. Fate, fate, fate intervened. And, how you know, was that process? You just went down there? Was there, was there like, a yeah. crazy line? What was that it was like? Cra- yeah, it was crazy. It was like... Um, and this is in Washington? Yeah. In Washington, in Key Arena. Um, and Where I saw it, Debbie it was, Gibson for the first time. Whatever. Debbie Gibson. <laughs> oh yeah, eighties. Uh, it was crazy, you know, and and it was it was so funny because it was like the stereotypical Seattle Starbucks in hand, more rain than anyone had seen in years, and it just happened to be the day there was audition. So like when they edited it, it was just like downpour on us and stuff. But uh, it was crazy. It was like four hours waiting outside. So my friend picked me up. We like had a cooler and. Um, he made sandwiches and and we went through the process and they got us in the in the stadium and it was crazy. There was like ten thousand people there and you know it was just like in the morning and they're making us do like the wave and like all these trying to keep you awake. Yeah. We built this city, you know, like <laughs> like sing songs and um, luckily like for me they started the day backwards so they're like all right so whoever signed up last gets to go first so i didn't have to stay there i literally was, I was like gonna say, in you, the first yeah. hour i got to go through the cattle call and i made it through and they're like okay in two days go to this hotel room and you know you'll be on camera and you know prepare your piece better and and from there i just you know it was like the next audition after the next audition and it was i was i was calling everyone because none of my friends watched american idol my but my two best friends did so that i grew up with that had been singing with me for years since i was like in you know preschool or whatever and so i'm like okay hit me what's going on is this a good look for me like here i am in in seattle doing underground like hip-hop drum and bass you know crazy underground and acapella music and everything i was doing was nothing like the traditional to, American to, Idol, yeah. Traditional, yeah, to, and television. You know what I mean. I, I'd film weird comedy p- music videos and hip hop video and weird just videos that were on YouTube. And at, you, and at that time, YouTube wasn't even popular. You know yeah, what I mean, no one was on that. But and so I was like, okay, I was comfortable in front of a camera, but you know, being in front of a judge, you know, it's like going in for an interview and you know, for a job for the first time, and you're like, hey, yeah, I really, really want this job. Like, you know. You're like hopeful and you're nervous and you know like, and then you're on camera, which you know you, for people, they could, all their insecurities could just be like totally changes you. It changes you, you know. This and, show changed when we added cameras to this room. Like I literally just I, just sitting here. Yeah, that, that's your camera yeah, up there. Like, hey. But yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> it, but it changed. I mean, you remember we didn't have cameras at first. It was like you could come in here. We, I didn't care about my hair. I didn't, you know. And now all of a sudden, it just changes you. Because you're aware of the microscope you're under. Yeah, yeah and v- back then I was I was a, I was a kid. I was cocky, you know, feeling like I was on top of the world. Like my hair was like all spiked and gelled up, and like <laughs> it was like I'm like, oh man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We call that youth. <laughs> the, the faux hawk. I, I, I you know, I, I was like, this is the do. You know, I'm like, no, not anymore. <laughs> At what point do you actually go in front of the judges, like Simon and stuff? At wh- how long? It's the fourth audition. For, oh, wow. For my, for my season. I don't know how they do it now, but, right. you know, for that. And, and the third, the, right before it was Nigel Lithgow, and he's a scary dude. Yeah. And I, and I, I just 
froze and I, oh sorry <laughs> I, and I don't I don't really freeze in, in my audition and and I was just like and you didn't really even know who he was other than he was executive producer I just knew he was but he the has an intimidation producer yeah. and I was I knew he I was like the judge is there the the face but the executive producer really makes I I knew that about television I knew yeah. you know so I'm like okay I got to impress this dude and I totally bombed really just bombed in front of Nigel and he's like he's like I like everything about you, but that was crap, you know. Wow. And he's like, I'm gonna pat, I'm gonna let you go to Paul, see Paul, Simon, and Randy, and uh, but he's like, if you do that in front of them, you're not making it onto the show. And I was just like, okay. I was like, you're but right. But it was because, and was I agreed with. Him. I was like, you're totally right. I don't know why I froze up. I've never done that before. This is just a whole weird process for me. And he's like, well, you better snap out of it if you want to be on television. And and luckily. And Paul, Simon, and Randy, um, I was still nervous. Like, and I, I don't, I don't get those shakes. I hadn't got them for a long time, you know, and and just been performing since I was, you know, thirteen. So, but that that situation is a, it's, it's a weird situation. It's gotta be, man. I mean, I don't. It's it's impressive to see so many people perform, but it's to walk out there and just see those, have the cameras, see those faces that everyone knows it's got to be nerve-wracking yeah, you know you what had, i mean it's kind of crazy you hadn't been watching the show so you didn't have I had a, never a, an seen assimilation with nothing e, not so once. i looked up on youtube uh elliot yamin because my best friend and another good friend after like my uh, other people found out they're like oh yeah yeah you should you know check out this person you should check out this person and i was like and elliot's background he had he's completely he never done anything professional in that and He's like one of my best homies now. I, we actually live together now, and it's kind of fate in that way, you know. It's uh -huh. Like now, Idol's like a big family. Once you've been on the show, it's like we're all we're all homies, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I was actually I looked him up, and I was like, man, this guy's voice is ridiculous. Like he's his talent level is crazy. But he didn't do anything. He did like karaoke a couple times, and that's it. And just happened and to he, come in. And yeah, and his, you know. So I was like, okay, if this guy can do it, and I, I've been doing this for years, like you know, so. That's what I went off of. But you didn't have so, and so there, there you are in front of Paula, Simon, and Randy, and you, right. you were nervous, but you, were, you pulled through that one just fine. I pulled it up, and they, <laughs> the editors, they made it look. I was like so cocky because my friends told me who are beatboxers, the beatboxing community at that time was really small because there was no outreach. Like now, there's like, like I was saying, YouTube is crazy. The beatbox yeah. world is crazy now. But back then, all the beatboxers I knew that had auditioned were like do not do it like they were instantly like this is a singing competition no so the oh, whole so they were telling time, you not to beatbox on the show my friends were okay yeah and so when i went into the the you know the the final interview with paul simon and randy i went in there i had nothing really prepared uh and then they have like accolades your like you know your the one sheet of like what you've done and i had won you know, Seattle and Vancouver's beatboxing competitions and stuff. And, and I opened for Jurassic five and played with Twista and all, all these like hip hop things and, yeah. and certain things, you know, um, over the years. And so Randy's like, Oh yeah. You know, he like, you know, he's like, Oh, I see you got some skills dog, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, he, I said no to the, he's like, yo, beatbox with me. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not here to beatbox. I'm, I'm here for singing. I want to, I want to make it through this for, to, for you guys. I was really like honest. And then he's like, come on dog. Cause he's like, if you watch my audition, I look like it's so, I look so cocky. And I was so mad when I saw it on TV for the first time, I was just like, <laughs> because it's they really it cuts to Randy going like oh so it says you beatbox and it's and it's like me going yeah yeah I do or something you know what I mean <laughs> and then it then it cuts to me and then it's like give us something and because they and he wore just, me out and, and just, after the third time I was like okay and I did something and so it totally looks like do 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 he's like this guy's like super cocky <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I was like, oh, the magic of television editing. Yeah. Well, this is perfect timing because we need to take one really quick break, and it's a short one. But when we come back, I really uh, – so I know you're not performing for us today. We just played your new single, which we're going to also talk about that. Awesome. But I want to talk about this beatboxing thing. Okay. I've been so excited about having you in here yeah. because I'm so fascinated by it. So, awesome. Uh, every so I'll be like I'll be like Randy like dog you maybe you'll give us some I'll be like, oh, <laughs> I, I, I dog that was terrific all right <laughs> baby let's you. do this thank you <laughs> you guys don't go anywhere you're listening to the Bob Show in the mornings right here on UBN Radio if you want to be part of the call we're at three two three two eight four seven eight two six don't go anywhere oh yeah this is love in the modern world this is dates and mates with dear Mrs D. 
<laughs> that is a definite no-no in the bedroom. <laughs> if you're dating, mating, or just plain relating, this is the show for you. You have to love yourself before you can love someone else. Girl, that is scandalous. Does your husband know? For celebrity guests, relationship experts, best-selling authors, and love advice, tune in to Dates and Mates with Dear Mrs. D every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific. I'm Dear Mrs. D, the number one dating strategist in the country, and you can only hear me live on UBN Radio. You are listening to The Bob Show, exclusively on UBNRadio.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Bob Merrick, sitting here with my co-host, Jeff Schroeder. Oh, that's good. See? (laughs) And super excited today because we have singer Blake Lewis live in the studio. And I've been so wanting to talk to him for years now. Um, Let's talk about beatboxing. Awesome. First of all, how did you start doing beatboxing? I was a really strange kid. (laughs) Really, I was that annoying kid in class that sat behind you, you know always fiddling around like super ADD when I was I was the most hyper kid ever and um, I'm an only child and growing up where we lived I didn't have any kids to play with so I was on a street you know I had uh, we had a dog I played with my, my dog but you sound I was, just like me up in Washington. That was me and my uh, living in Everett. I was so sad. I was <laughs> so, so sad. sad. Yeah. It, I was Washington sad. Washington is a very sad. Washington no. is a very, uh, and you'll back this up. Washington is a no very friends. sad place it to rains grow up. All the time. I. Um, that's well. the problem. It doesn't rain all the time. It's gray, it's gray. all the time. Yeah. You wish it would rain all the time. Like yeah. it's gray, and then it just gets drizzly, and you blink really fast. Like it's, it's <laughs> really miserable. <laughs> so and it, it has the second highest suicide rate in the world. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. I well my th- at that point in the time yeah it was it was it was weird as a kid because I I didn't I I was trying sports and stuff but I wasn't that good at sports um, then and you know I didn't have any friends to play with so uh, I watched a lot of cartoons I had a lot of toys you know and uh, Transformers and you know and Michael Winslow from Police Academy yeah I was just gonna say that I swear uh, (laughs) Robin Williams Mork and Mindy I grew up with Mork and Mindy and I grew up with old time radio shows like I grew up wanting to be a jock Uh a a radio jock really bad Uh, Fibber McGee and Molly and uh, Bob Hope and Jack Benny and Jackie Gleason and and Jonathan Winters and these crazy comedians that would make noise with their mouth and so I just started you know making noise and it came from that and um, I didn't start beatboxing until high school when I saw an acapella group do it Um, I think I was seven I just maybe turned 17 and because and my I I owe a lot to Michael Jackson too because in his songs you know he has yeah you know he's so percussive you know and uh that that you know growing up with that was just like you know that was that was it for me you know yeah i I liked making people laugh and i'm super cheesy and over the top and you know animated you know because you know robin williams and jim carrey and and all these comedians growing up so that's where that side of beatboxing comes it actually stems from comedy and uh just sound effects you know and did you know you could sing then too yeah, I grew up, my mom uh, was a bluegrass singer growing up, so I, you know, through the house, you know, she'd play and sing guitar and finger pick and, um, you know, I'd harmonize with her and, you know, I was just, you know, enthralled, you know. Sure. And super inspiring growing up in a house, you know, filled with great music and my mom's voice is awesome. Um, shout out to mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom, love you. And so, and and so, at what point did you think I'm good enough at this beatboxing thing? Because I think a lot of little kids, and it's you talk about Michael Winslow from Police Academy. I think we all sort of grew up, you know, you want everybody that was like the coolest thing because he, you know, makes car alarms, like he does right, all right. kinds of crazy sound I effects. Was, yeah, I was all of us fascinated. kids want to do that. But how do you? And, and you know, we're all running around the house making weird little noises, and your parents are like, "What are you doing?" And you're like, "Can't you tell that was a car alarm?" Like, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to go from there to being good enough to actually enter a <laughs> competition like where did you how did that come about um you know as soon as i i had been doing it subconsciously you know for years not knowing it was beatboxing so when i saw the uh my friend matthew selby who was he's in a group was in a group called impact in seattle and they were amazing and they're they're still around and they're fantastic 
and um I, that was it for me. I was just like, this is it. Sure. I met him, and it was it's such a monumental moment in my life. The South Park just aired the first episode, and I was doing like the whole scene. Like I was like, what is this show? You know. <laughs> so I was like, dude, you're such a you know you know, doing, don't hold doing, back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sweet guys. You know, just you know, I was a like. Uh, and I met him, and we got talking, and I started doing the voices and stuff, and he was doing some too, and I was like, man, this guy's like, you know, he's like 10 years, I'm like, just look at you, he's like becoming like an instant mentor, I'm like, what are, who are you, you know, like, uh-huh. one of those people you meet where you're just like, who are you, so... Ever since I, and it, he had another show in a week, and I was like, in a week, I'm coming back, and I'm gonna beatbox for you, and you're gonna love it, you know, and I came back, and I was like, <laughs> like super fast and that's i mean that's not the you know best when you first when i first started i wasn't musical at beatboxing at all i was uh-huh. just like fast is fast 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 you know you, you were because you're, you're trying to impress right totally yeah. so and he's and you know he's like hey man slow down check out these beats you know like and uh you know and then i started developing the craft and i i'd been a beatboxer ever since and then two years later right out of high school um someone was this beatboxer singer was leaving a group to go into the group that he was in because he was leaving. So he told me to audition for this other group and I got in it. And the first month I had 32 gigs. It was crazy because wow. I want people to understand the road. Non- like the moment I started my acapella group was crazy. Yeah. Cause I want people to understand. Cause I think I, cause I have a personal thing. Cause you're the only other person I know who could do it this well. Um, and uh, this is not name dropping. Everybody knows my backstory, except for probably Blake. But one of my best friends is Lance Bass, and I used to go on tour with NSYNC. And Justin Timberlake would constantly come up, especially during like sound check and stuff. Total beatboxer. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, I think that people only think about about beatboxing is they think it's just the or what I can't even do it. But <laughs> but you know, ma- but about about making it just the beat. Right. And Justin was the very first person I knew who actually like throw it threw in like album cuts like right. samples like like musical samples oh, yeah. yeah and like actually throwing in musical samples in between the beats that he then is also producing the beats right and i always thought it was i was fascinated because i'm like this is the cool thing as it's, opposed to just some like right you know you're hanging out with your friends and <laughs> exactly yeah. that's what that's what i feel like most people will start yeah. doing beatboxing but then you came along and you did it on american idol and you do it in this way that it's you did the same exact thing where you got up there and you're doing an entire song where it's you singing with, and you're also giving you yourself your own backing track. Like, that's what just blows my mind away. Because I think there's it's so it's such a talent, and I don't think people realize just how talented it is. It's an amazing art form, and I was so blessed that I got to a be on American Idol, which was an amazing experience. But actually, represent myself, you know, because nobody's and, done it since in a live. You know that that was the actual. I mean, and you know, another milestone for me was getting on that show because it was live, and I was like, that was the the initial thing. It wasn't my friends going like, oh, this is, you know, you should do it. It's television. It yeah. was like, oh, this is live television. Like, if I swear on this, I will be forever known as the guy that you know got mad and sweared on that. You yeah. know, I, 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 you know, it was like, okay, if I get on there, I if I can make it to this this stage. Uh, from my my strategy was kind of not to have a strategy, but in a sense, like I got to the the way that the show was structured, it was like, oh wow, I get to pick. The first week was like, if I made it, the three weeks is like, you pick whatever music you wanted to do, and they don't do that now. That's yeah. just crazy. That's like, okay, I can pick artists that I sound like, and and I can arrange these songs. And they're like, yeah, you have the freedom. You can, you can arrange it however you want. We have these arrangers for you, which they have tons of arrangers. And you, you like two of the days of the week is you meet with the arrangers and stuff. And, and me, I brought my own little studio and I did that and I beatboxed and, you know, made songs halftime instead of the, you know, and, and the fact that I got to beatbox on that show was just like the biggest blessing in the world. You know, I have little kids coming up to me now that are like beatboxing and like that are five, you know, yeah. and girls that are like, now there's some girls that are beatboxing and they reach out and it's just, it's awesome. Cause it's, it's definitely like a, a, a dude's thing, you know? Well, yeah. Well, and like I said, but you also took it past that level beyond the Michael Winslow. It's, so it's beyond sound effects and it's also beyond just making like a cymbal sound and a drum beat with your mouth. Like, right. is that whole thing? Is, is there something that you do you have like a favorite m- moment that you could maybe give us a little of? 
or or do you have something? <laughs> or to, to a favorite me? moment? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's just uh, of of the stuff of the stuff that you've done that you already something that's easy in your head. I I want people to really hear or just like sounds. Oh, and just just do it in general. Oh yeah, yeah, um, if, yeah. Give us I mean, give us something. I want people to hear what it is that I'm so excited about. You know what I mean? And I'm not I'm not trying to add, I'm not trying to add the pressure on you. No, but I want people to understand because this is our you know we do music Mondays here. Right. Uh, I love that. Yeah. I do it on my <laughs> every Facebook on on Monday. I post new music every Monday too. You know, so yeah, and th- and that to me was the thing that I was excited about. You know, I mean, like, obviously, I, I want you back anytime that you want to come and sing for us. But, but I, I, the thing I was really excited about this was, like I said, I wanted I want people to really hear right. that beatboxing is so much more than just p- ch- ch- p- or whatever. Right, right. You know. <clears throat> so don't get me doing it. Please I stop that making was me do bad. it. Please stop <laughs> making me do. No, it's good. If you it. kept that going, I would I would have done something over that. <laughs> I mean, I grew up like with the sounds like. <laughs> you know, sound effects and then incorporating, you know, uh, like like you were saying with Justin, like back in the days, like. More like, <laughs> me- how do you make so many that's different what sounds? I mean. yeah, that's why you're. That's well, I mean, y'all get you guys can hum, right? So, yeah, and then then, I mean, if you just, you know, <laughs> see, you just make yeah. two sounds at once, you know. And Did that- you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess see? I can see. Okay. You know what I mean? Sandwich. So that's <laughs> <laughs> you're like eating. Mm, this is a delicious. This is a delicious ham and pastrami. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but uh, there's so many amazing beatboxes. I'm, I'm and I've just scratched the surface with the human voice. I'm just an I, I'm an okay beatboxer. My thing is vocal scratching. So like to up a wop up a up a wop yep 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 more vocal scratching, and like cartoon voice. I mean I've been doing voiceover for a long time, so doing cartoon voices, and that's where that vocal scratching comes from. Um, but and is that so just many... from hearing it? Like you just you hear other voices, like you were doing the, uh, yeah, the South well, Park, South Park. That was like right on, and you Dude, could swear. Dip, 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 you know, stuff like you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, like growing up, listening to that, but a lot of turntablism, a lot, you know, those uh, little scratch pickles back in the day, you know, Mixmaster Mike, Cubert, um, so many. Right now, C two C, they're from Francis for turntablists, and they're amazing. The album's ridiculous. It kind of sounds like the Gorillas. Sounds like Dan the Automator. Amazing album. And it's all just their mouths? No, no, no but, but that's yeah. where, I, where I, you know, turntablism, like vocal scratching, that's where that comes from. And then I incorporated, you know, cartoons, voices, you know. Uh, and then growing up, like sound effects, like tu- tube and throat singing, um, you know. Uh, what, the, what is that? <laughs> but they can do it to where there's two pitches and they can control one of them. Like that, and that just blows my mind. Like just, like doing it live, you mean they can control? Live, yeah, I saw them uh Womad, which is uh, I remember Womad. You remember Womad? Yeah. I, I don't even know if they do it anymore. They but don't. It was Peter Gabriel's thing. Yeah, it was yeah. The, one of the best concerts totally. I've ever been to, and I got to sit down with them and do it with them. And they were like, they didn't really speak any English, but they had a translator. And they they were like helping me out with it, and that was that was just like an amazing, monumental experience for me. With these you know guys from Mongolia and like you know, and they're in Washington because one of the shows was in Washington, and it was amazing, and. So, I mean, world beat, like, you know, as a beatboxer, I listen to everything. I mean, I'm a huge EDM guy. I've been doing electronic music forever and been a fan of it since, you know, early 90s. And, you know, so I, I just try and wrap my head around every kind of beat. And, then you know, that's that makes me as a beatboxer, I guess. And and again, because and but how do you then sing over it? Mm. Because that's. That's a whole <clears throat> other layer to Roselle this. Rozelle made that famous with "If Your Mother Only Knew." If your child, you know, it's, you're not really singing it. It's like certain vowels, like P's, like you know. So if you're saying with like, you know, you know, it's not the same time. You know, there's gaps and everything. Right. But but didn't you but, do? Uh, <clears throat> for, forgive me if I'm wrong. But on American Idol, didn't you do something where it was where you because you were all singing all your songs? But did you do a pre-record beatbox? That you sang no, over? No, not live on Idol. I, on the tour, if you're talking, I did a, I have a loop I f- pedal. There's something I have in my mind. It's probably, I do a loop pedal show, like okay. one man show. Uh, I've been, KT Tunstall does that, Howie Day. Yeah, I've been yeah. doing it for, I mean, since around 2001, 2002, um, when the first, wherever, whenever the first Boss Loop pedal came out, I was working at Guitar Center, 
and it came out, and I was just like, yes, this is, oh my god, yes. So, I mean, I have a whole then rack. You, I should have you, brought it. Because then, then you can make your loops, and then... Yeah. And right then, and sing over that. Right now, yeah. yeah, I do an all vocal cover of the White Stripes Seven Nation Army. You know, <laughs> you know, I was a little but lower so, I mean, key, so, but you, so you'll do that, I'll loop and then that, you'll sing, and then and then I'll sing, sing I'm gonna fight them off. You know, and then do some harmonies, and you know, <laughs> you know. Are you so? Wow. Let, so let's talk about because I could. I and really, you could just constantly like you could do a beat and then kind of bring in something like over that and just keep going right, over keep and over. Right, keep going like so on the on the one that I have now, it's it's the RC50 and it's it's just a, a loop pedal, but it's three different samples. So I, I'll on one I'll do all the beat, the other one I'll do a bass line, and then I'll do harmonies, and then I actually actually have a sampler called a chaos pad. And that's four other samples, so I can go a ah ooh ah a a ah ah ooh 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 a a a a a a, you know, and sample it. And yeah, but wow. then how does it? I get so confused by this stuff because I know, like, even if, even I get confused <laughs> on my uh, well, just garage band like, on instruments, my you know, iPad. A- Next time I'll come in and I'll. I'll Put you on the mic and I'll sample you. Um, well, I don't know about that, but I would, <laughs> I definitely want you to come back and bring and bring all your stuff because I'm riveted by this whole thing. I, I just think it's so cool. But we got to talk really quickly. You have a new single out. I do. Uh, let's talk about that. And does that mean we have a new album coming out? Yes, very soon. Actually, uh, today I'm actually right after this. I'm going back in the studio to finish some harmony vocals on my last song for my album, which is and called so, Portrait of a Chameleon. And so, uh, <coughs> what's what's the inspiration behind the new album? Um, a lot of the songs are, are different. I mean, every song tells a story. Um, I have a song about addiction. Uh, my with my mother and my friend. Um, I have a song about surviving. You know, uh, pulling through. It's actually called Survivor. <laughs> um, the opening song's about just kind of like I'm back. You know, um, you know, I haven't been gone, but you know, I took a, a lot of time off to like to find myself. And yeah, well, you and you, you you keep mentioning that. What? How, how did you lose yourself? Oh, I mean, I just like looking back. I mean, I, I'm just being, I was a cocky kid, like during Idol. I, I lost myself in that whole process too with the hype. and You started and believing your own hype? Yeah, I totally did. And I got really depressed and I, I wronged some people. Um, you know, I was I was rude. Uh, my homie Sanjay was on the show. I threw him under the bus and I was really rude actually on a show like this. And it was went on the internet back then. And I was just... I was kind of a kind of a dick back then, <laughs> not gonna lie, you know. And um, you know, it, and w- when you realize that, that's just that's a whole. You, I mean, you know. Yeah, but it's I, good you came to a point where you did realize that and yeah. you changed. Yeah, you know, you know I mean? so I, it's a good thing. Yeah, my, I, I, you know, I moved to LA three years ago to to find mind, body, and soul. Um, after I, I like I got depressed. I gained thirty pounds, and I was like, you know, I was smoking weed every day and drinking heavily and I didn't like myself and I was like the only person that's going to change this is me and the only person that's going to change my career is me and and you know it because I had all these people these yes people in my ears like oh do this do this do this I I bought this huge house after Idol and it was two three months before the the you know economy crashed yeah and then I was stuck in this house that I couldn't afford to pay anymore you know, and, uh, you know, it was just all this stuff. And I, and I didn't like who I was at that time. And that was the main thing was like, I don't, I'm not even the same person I was, you know, w- you know, when I was in high school, like, yeah. and like, how do I get back to my roots? How do, how do I become, you know, I was B shorty. And then all of a sudden I'm Blake Lewis off of this pop fame, which is, which I never believed in. And actually before American Idol, I wrote some anti television songs, anti reality TV stuff. And it was kind of crazy, and so it was a he- I was a head case, you know, and um, people didn't even know I moved back to Washington. I, I, all the things I said I wanted to do, I wasn't doing, like helping the community and 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 doing stuff for you know underprivileged kids and certain just certain things. I was like, who is this guy? I'm not even the same person. So I moved out here, and uh, th- life's changed completely. You well, because well, because one of the things you're talking about here is when you when you talk about believing the hype, and because this happens to us. I mean, I know this happens to me and on my level. Jeff's certainly way more famous than I am. But people have this expectation yeah. that because you're quote unquote famous, that you're right. doing something, anything in the public eye, you're rich, rich, rich. Yeah. And yeah. and you <laughs> have. Yeah. And that you you're living the high life. Mm-hmm. And 
And people don't realize that it's like, and, and so you believe in the hype of American yeah. Idol. American Idol tells me I'm a star now. Right. Well, stars get to live this way. Stars get to behave right. this way. The lifestyles of the lavish. Yeah. And, you know. and it's really not until you stop and go into yourself and try to really figure out what's real, what's yeah. what's hype, what's right. what's you know what's blown up, what's ego, and yeah. And some people never realize that. So it's right. it's great you came to that point, or I don't know what triggered it, but it's probably just multiple things on top of each yeah, other. Yeah, neg- negativity, you know, and I'm. I'm a really positive person and I feel like I haven't, you know, wronged people, but I have, you know, I've done, I did stupid stuff before American Idol and then after I did stupid F stuff and, the, and it took a, you know, it took like a good year for me to realize all, oh, I'm like, whoa. But wait, I'm, how you know? old were you though too? I was 24, 25. Yeah. You know, that's, that's I'm, 30, right. I'm 32 now. Yeah. So. You know, I, I grew, I was growing in trying to become the man and the man that I was trying to become wasn't that dude right then so I, I had to really I, I came back to Washington it was really weird I couldn't I couldn't go anywhere because they're never beside pop stars there's no pop stars in Washington I was like the one dude and no, was yeah, such it was all pressure grunge everywhere music I went everywhere I went I, cu- I mean I would be bombarded by people and it was it was really it was I wasn't I don't I wasn't ready for that you know right as yeah, a you- young adult going and becoming a man you know I you know, it was a life lesson that really, I mean, it, it took a, a while to it's learn. A, it's a lot, especially overnight celebrity, yeah. you know, it's a lot, a lot of pressure that people don't <laughs> think about, you know, it's like you see all these people on TV shows or American Idol, you don't know how it affects them directly, like personally, because yeah. overnight celebrity, it's, it's a celebrity mm-hmm. is tough to deal with personally, yeah. you know, you have mm-hmm. to gradually make your way into that I, to deal with it. And I, overnight's got to be, a, 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 you it, know, it was crazy. I mean, I never felt anxiety before. I mean, I'm really happy-go-lucky, like mm-hmm. fun. I'm, I'm like a producer. I, like, I throw parties and events, and like I, I, I like people having fun around me too. And and man, I I've got anxiety and depression, and I, I didn't know that I was even there for six months. And I I've been like going to the doctor, like, what's wrong with me? Like, you know, like you know, like yeah. They're like, no, that's all mental health, dude. Like, you need to you need to find the find yourself. You know? Well, and this is going to sound totally weird, so sit sit with me on this one. But kind of what you're talking about is kind of how I've been kind of just trying to describe this thing going on with Justin Bieber. Like this this thing where it's so much of it is youth based because yeah. it's the youth and then he's like, you know, pops up so big and now he's believing his own hype and he's mm-hmm. and he's but you can also tell and especially if you know if you've paid any attention, there is a good guy in there that you can tell wants really to be good, you can I'm, tell wants to be something else wants to go yeah. in this other direction but he's sort of fighting these demons that are pulling him to essentially kind of look like a jackass yeah. that's what i'm hearing you when you're looking back on sort of the choices you made right. at a younger age like, and i think part of that is just what happens when you're young and if you have any kind of fame power or money right at at, at that age and then and you have all these people telling you how awesome you are right it's kind of hard to and he's not on a, act. he's on another level oh he's just a crazy yeah he's, crazy he's on a whole level. other level I mean, which is why he's even that much more and, and of especially a, the youth like the youth aspect of that and and the psychology behind that i mean look at michael jackson you know I mean? yeah. that's like the biggest example ever of all time far as i'm concerned like that guy was the most gifted talented pop star of all time and from day one like the psychology behind that and yeah i mean look at yeah yeah the cr- like the family, the lifestyle to, to decisions and, and just being in the front. Like, I don't know what goes, what goes on behind closed doors. I can't judge on that, you know, and in America, uh, everywhere in the world, we're human. We have eyes, we open, we judge, Yeah, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm looking, it's just, it's, it's in our nature. It's human nature. So I, I give that, ju- I give Justin Bieber all the credit in the world. He's super talented. He's super. Na- when I met him, I did a show with him in New Orleans, right at the, the height of him blowing up. It was mm-hmm. sold out. I met his mom. I hung out with him all night, and he was the nicest guy. And uh, you know, hopefully, he, he finds himself and he be, continues to be that guy. You know, but his, you know, like you're on television and yeah. you're and you have all these fans. His, his, I can't even fathom. Yeah, that's another level. What I mean, goes yeah. on inside? And the, you talk about brain, like yes you know men. I mean? Yeah, just he's surrounded, he's surrounded by. by he could do yeah. whatever. He's got all the money in the world, all yeah. the fame in the world. Just who was uh? We had someone on the show talking about like. Um, when he was dating Selena Gomez, like when he showed up, Justin Bieber was uh, like, "Oh, it was Lachlan. Oh, yeah, yeah Lachlan oh, was right. Lachlan was doing a movie with Selena Gomez, and Justin Bieber and showed like, up on set. Yeah, and it's like he said, there's like football fields full of you know yeah, paparazzi following him. Right. It's like, dude, how do you? 
for him to handle any of that is just, I mean, that's, I didn't know that's crazy. It's a lot for an adult I didn't know how to handle yeah. paparazzi. That was like, I was a mind trip. I, I couldn't handle that. I was just like, I said so many stupid things. I get, you know, it's like, they're like, when you get to that, that fame, it's, it's, there's no privacy, you know? And I think there's a bill trying to get passed in certain states or even in Congress that, it's like an anti-paparazzi rule. They've been trying to shut that down for years and while, years. Yeah. I mean, like probably twenty years by now. But it's just gotten to a ridiculous kind of. Well, now it's crazier than ever because everybody that has a Twitter is now all of a sudden right. like potential paparazzi. I mean, right. like everyone, you, you yeah, just, every, yeah. everyone has an opinion. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. a journalist. Everyone's a blogger. Every, oh, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> Do you still get it now? Has it died down? Because oh, you're it definitely not... died down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when I went, I kind of went into like being a recluse, you know, and and that's what I was saying when I was in Washington. I never went out. I like. People didn't even know I was living there. Like some of my friends, because even musicians that I had worked with and, and done stuff for the year were treating me differently. And I was like, dude, I'm the, I'm the same person. But, you know, right, I'm not. I technically, in, in anyone's eyes, I'm not, you know, yeah. and, except for my super close friends, like my best friends, you know. They like, you know, they help me out as much as possible. And so during that time, and so it was, it was really weird, like uh, the, like envy, envious people and jealous people. And, and so I had to peace out. And, uh, I, you know, I, I couldn't take it. So I, I literally went to Eagle Rock and I, I stayed uh, at my friend Dan's house uh, for a while. And and then I came back and I was cool, you know, and it, it took a long. And I went through heartbreak at that time, too. And that's how I wrote Heartbreak on Vinyl, my my single that went to number one. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of uh, out of the chaos comes clarity, you know, always. And well, that's what because we only have a couple. We actually literally have like three minutes left. But I, I did want to ask you, because I think this is such an important thing, and it's all about the message of this show. Uh, you were just talking about how you have sort of found yourself, like, mm -hmm. spiritually and everything else. What what was that? You don't have to go into the intimate details of it, but what is it that you have found? What's the advice that you have found that you would maybe go back and give to yourself a couple years ago? Um, you know, just back i used to trust my instincts and then i stopped doing that so for me it's it's trusting your instinct because that's usually your gut feelings the first one and that's good um you know I, I learned a lot during those times like bite like i used to never bite my tongue and now you have to because you have you know it's just it's so time, weird there's a time and a there's place a time it's called choosing place. your battles yeah exactly and I didn't know that, and I, you know, like I said, like that's how I wrong people, you know, uh, and it's just not cool. So, definitely, you know, uh, no one teaches you those things. It's like oh, you have to learn them naturally. Um, but I came here, you know, mind, body, and soul. Like I, I, I work out, I eat healthy, um, you know, I get my sleep, and I hike, and I, you know, I you know, meditate. And I go on these long hikes by myself or with my dog and um, I started running like just being fit, like doing th certain things that help you every day, you know, and I live my my life day by day. You know, I'm not I know if I'm going to make it to the next one. And, you know, I learned that from my mom being an AA one, you know, one step at a time. And, you know, I've had I kind of applied that, you know, in general to everything. So what's the one thing that, you know, now that you wish you could tell yourself right as you're coming off of idol? Oh man! <laughs> um, don't be a dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't be a dick. You know, yeah. Treat treat others how you want to be treated. You know. Yeah. If you if you're a douche, then you're probably gonna be treated like one. You know. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you I mean, you learn, and everyone goes through any stage, not just celebrity, but everyone goes through learning phases, and you have to learn from your yeah. m past mistakes. That's the only way you get better. So right. you stay, know, stay positive. You know, uh, through the dark times. You know, like try. I mean, it's tough. But try and do something uh, and and do something that's not for you. You know, be charitable, you know, be selfless. Yeah. So. Well, I think you're fantastic. I well, thought you thanks. were fantastic for a very long time. I definitely want you to come back and, and do some performing for us. I definitely will. Uh, I'll bring I, the whole setup. And uh, I would love, I'll love, love that. So tell people, because uh, I know you're big on Vine, by the way. You love to get on that Vine and, and do I, little 10-second yeah, really second, weird, second weird, beatbox. Weird videos, yeah. Um, when that came out, I was like, this is the best app ever made. Yeah, the other day, you just sat in a chair spinning, going... <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I mean, all the social networks. I'm all on all of those. Uh, the album's coming out soon, and Vine. So wh when when is the album due out? Um, well, I'm gonna mix it in the next couple of weeks, and I, I don't know. I don't know what the home's gonna be. I started my own record label. I might just release it on that. I might do a crowdfunding, like 
pledge or, or Kickstarter and put it out that way. Um, so we'll we'll see, you know, um, you know, if uh, Republic decides to pick up the whole album, then that's great. If not, you know, we'll we'll see. <laughs> well, what, whatever you decide, please come back and perform it because I'm really excited about the new album. I'm very uh, the excited. single. The first single is currently available. It's called Your it's Touch. It's called Your Touch. It's it's done crazy. I've I've sold over a hundred and like twenty thousand copies of it. It's wow! Just, congratulations. It's, it's yeah, globally. It's it's it's. I bought it's one really yesterday. Insane. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, the response has just been so positive. I have like two and a half million hits on YouTube and it's just like, it's just crazy. The positivity of this song. And it's, 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 it's just invigorates me to like, you know, I got, I'm, this is the last week of finishing my album. So I'm just like attacking it. And well, you're crazy talented. And you know, this is, I was going to say this and I'm totally out of time, but your music is the kind of music that's best served loud. Oh, thank you. And that's a we- it's a weird thing to say, but I was thinking about that months and months ago. And then years when I was listening to your music, it was the first time like it hit me again. But like, there's a Madonna song, the four minutes, the one she did with Justin Timberlake. That when oh, you yeah. when Mom you listen, yeah. Well, word. first of all, the lyrics to that song are really stupid. But that backing thing that Timbaland did, Timbaland's the man, is really incredible. So it's like, but when you're just if you just listen to that song, you know, just like in general, like you just kind of have it like on your computer speakers or something. Yeah. It's a really kind of a stupid song. But again, that's because those lyrics are so dumb. But when you have, but when <laughs> you have, they're really dumb lyrics. I'm a huge Madonna fan. They're really stupid lyrics. But when you have like your <laughs> headphones on, like Beats by Dr. Dre, like cranking it up that four minute song is awesome like it's just because it's it's a song that's meant to be heard loud and your music when i was listening to it in the car this morning i was like it's when the louder it gets the better it sounds awesome you know it's like it's just like it's <laughs> you, like it's, it's such a good thing because there's so much stuff going on melodically and you know and all the different layers and the music and stuff it's thank it's you really so good. much i i spent a long time um me and my friend matt lang uh we're doing the whole album together and we, we spent like a month on that song alone and the album's just, it's great. It's really fun. I can't wait to get it out there. I'm well, I, so excited. And I can't I, even tell you. I can't wait either. Uh, you guys, we have got to wrap it up. I didn't take any commercial breaks because uh, I just wanted as much time as we could with Blake. But we, and we didn't even touch on so many things. Uh, but I'll come back. Please, please, yeah. please come back. You guys, you can follow Blake on Twitter at Blake Lewis. His website is BlakeLewisOfficial.com. Uh, you can follow Jeff Schroeder on Twitter. He's Jeff Schroeder 23. Don't forget to check him out on CBS.com. He's got a few few shows left. Yep. Uh, and, and One uh, left on Friday. A, but you could tune in and see all the between takes on CBS.com. Who do you, who do you have this Friday? Um, I don't know. It's always a surprise. You don't know. It'll be a surprise. Okay. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> surprise. And you can follow me on Twitter at The Bob Show. Uh, today's quote for thought, and I love this. Listen to it. It's very short. Always give without remembering... And always receive without forgetting. And that's from Brian Tracy. I like it. I really like that one. Uh, Brendan Bradley's back here tomorrow with the What in the World Wide Web and digital artist Shilpi Roy. On Wednesday, we've got Carter Oosterhouse from all those HGTV shows, Fix Up Your House and everything else. And then on Thursday, we have Curtis Peoples is back performing live in the studio. Yeah, love Curtis Peoples. So... Uh, great week ahead of us. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Thank you guys for making it through us on this Monday. Here's a little gots to get to her from Blake Lewis. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you guys Let's here tomorrow it. morning. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, guys. <laughs>